Okay, let's bring this into Maya so we can work on our UVs. And there's at least three ways that I know about that you can bring this into Maya. You could export an FBX, uh, but usually what we do is we export either object or a Maya object. And if I go into export, I can select object or I can select Maya type object. But my preferred way to do this, to work seamlessly between these two applications is to use Gozi. I'm going to leave you a link in the description below to this page where it will show you how to install and uh, setting up Gozi so that this video doesn't become too lengthy. Once you have Gozi installed, all you have to do is press Gozi. This will export the current subtool. You can also do all and it will export all subtools or visible. I just want to export visible. If I just press visible right now and I come into Maya, you can see that my tools are tiny right now. So a way to fix this is if we go down to our export settings and we change our scale, let's say five. And now when we go Z, our lollipop is a bit bigger. If you want to find out the true dimensions of your mesh, you can use a ruler in Maya. If you go to create, measure tools, distance tool, by pressing spacebar, you get the, the perspective view, the top, the right, and the front view. If I just over the front view and I press spacebar again, I go into that view. Now I can place my distance tool. So I'll just click here first, and I'll click here. And this is telling me my lollipop has 22 centimeters. Now that's a big lollipop. I can go back into ZBrush and change my export settings. So I'm thinking, Maybe I want a 10 centimeter lollipop. So I'll just bring this down to 2.5. Press Go Z again, invisible. If I grab my first locator and I select my move tool. That's about 11 centimeters. That's okay for a lollipop, I think. You can hide this in Maya by just clicking and dragging Control H and you'll hide it. To bring it back, you can Shift H and it will come back. If I press space again, I go back into my perspective view. Let's grab this top part of my lollipop. If I go into my UV editor, and if you don't have it right here like I have it, you can go into UV and click on UV editor, and the UV editor window will pop up. Now, if I select my piece of geometry again, I can see my UV here. I can use my UV toolkit to do all kinds of operations on UVs. To access your UV kit, you can go into Tools and Hide or Show. Your UV toolkit gives you a set of options that you can use to work on your UVs. If I select multiple objects, I'll see the UV space for every single one of them. If I right click on my UV space and choose UV shell, I can select one of these shells individually and move them around as well as scaling them, rotate them and do whatever I need to with it. So it's really easy to manage your UVs here. So the way I like to work my UVs is by using the 3D cut and sew to UV tool. If I come back to my selection mode, I'll just select, right click, go into object mode, select just this guy. Actually, I'll just control H this guy, select this one, and I can see my seams here. As you can see, if I just press F, focus on just this. As you can see, I have this seam here that I don't really want it to be there. So with my, going back to my UV tool, if I press control and double click that, it just removes that seam. And if I just double click this bit, it adds a seam right there. So let's do the same down here. Okay. So you see, my UV looks like really, looks really bad over there. 
I'll just check to see if I don't have any more seams. And I have one here that I don't really want. So again, control, double click, that's gone. Now if I go into UV shell, you see as I over these UVs, I can see the different shells. So if I just over these UV, because I want to unwrap these UV, and I press D on my keyboard, I get this, exactly what I wanted. I can also select my old object and press D and that will unwrap everything. If I go into object mode, it's my lollipop and pressing shift H. Another way you can do this is by con pressing control one and you'll isolate whatever you got selected. And when you press control one again, you bring everything else back. If I now go into edge mode, and I'll double click this edge, right, shift, right mouse button. I can straighten my shell. Now I right click, UV shell, go into my move mode. I keep can keep adjusting this. I can select going to object mode, select both of them. Now UV shell, select this guy, and go into my rotate and rotate. I can scale this and move. If I expand this a little bit, I'll see all my options. If I click this button here, it will give me a texture. I can hide this texture from this area, from my UV editor, but still see it over there in my perspective mode. To check for distortion, you can use this button. And this is pretty white, so we, we don't really have distortion. Red areas would show you that we have distortion in that place. And by distortion, I mean an image would be distorted in that area. Now we can play around with the size of our UV shells according to the density that we have, that we need in different areas of our mesh. For example, I might need more resolution in this area than I'll need on the stick area. So I could have my stick, make my stick smaller and these bits bigger, for example. If I analyze my mesh, I see that there's a problem area here. You can see this area is really stretched. It seems that we have one seam here and one seam there. Just select object mode, select this object, go into my UV seam tool and Control, double click, control, double click, get rid of those seams. And if I press control one, oops, he's gotta be in object mode, so I'll just change to these two object mode, select that, control one, and now go back to my seam tool, double click that. and my edge went all the way up there. So if I press control, click and start dragging, oops, too much. I can clear my seams like that way as well. So control, click, start dragging, let go, and I clear my seam. So let's go back into UV shell mode. And I'll just select all of this, press D. Oh, my tool needs to be se selected, press D. <coughs> and you know what? I could fix this using straightened UV shell. I'm gonna have a very lengthy part here. So I'm gonna have another seam up here. So if I go back to my edge mode, select my tool, and this time I'm just going to click and drag and the color changed showing me that I have a seam there and everything is okay. So I can just go into UV shell, which by the way, I can just click there, go back to my tool, select all that, press D. Now if I just come out of my tool mode and I have edge mode selected, so I'll just double click. It will select all these edge, shift, right click 
straighten shell do the same one for same thing for these one double click straighten shell and now if I come down to transform I have this really cool option here just called texel density and I can sample the texel, texel density from one from one UV shell to another one so if I get the texel density of this one and I paste it on the that one it will have the same texel density I can come down to unfold and I have a few more options here usually this is set to 45 degrees and straighten UV it's gonna straighten this UV on the U and the V or just one of them so if I press straighten UV I get a straight UV and I can do the same thing for this one straighten UV if I really wanted to optimize the space here I could make it so that both the back texture and the front texture and this and this UV shell I said texture I meant UV shell that my UV shells match so I could make one place one on top of the other and now I will just texture one of them there's a better way to do this is if I select one and I press shift click another one and I go into arrange and layout I can stack similar I believe that when I created this the edges didn't made a pair so they're in uneven that's why I can't place one on top of the other and that's why when I change my texel density copy one from the other to the other they still have a different size so this is not optimal but I can just make this a bit smaller not none of these UV shells should leave should come out of your UV space and a way you can check that is if you have this on and if they come out you'll see that will happen now one thing that I didn't do is check my texel density if I come back to UV shell and I select this one and go back into just transform and I'll get the texel density of this one and I'll apply it if I select here because there's two of them if I just click one I'm just selecting one so I'll just click and drag that will select both UV shells if I set you see that it's a bit different now I want this to have the same texel density as this so that texturing process we won't have a big difference let's say if these two were tiny the texture that I applied to my lollipop it would be huge here and tiny here so a lot of detail here and no detail here so that's why I, I come to texel density and I try to have them at the same or very similar texel density you can spend as much time as you want in here now I can go into object mode select both of them go Z back into zebra and now in ZBrush if you go to UV map you can morph this we got new UVs so I'm just gonna export this into Substance Painter and that's it for this video on the next video we're gonna learn how to combine textures in Substance Painter so that we can bring them later on into Unreal Engine so like and subscribe click the bell button for new videos support me on Patreon and I'll see you on the next video